Bum, ba, da, dum. Howdy y'all, Banjo Ben here, along with my buddy Daniel. We're gonna teach you how to jam an A today. I've already done a lesson for jamming in G mm -hmm. on the mandolin, and it had rave reviews, Daniel. Great. I mean, all kinds of people liked it all over the world. Over 32 countries wrote in to uh, tell me that it was the best mandolin lesson they've ever seen. So we're gonna continue that. Here's the thing we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about you know what the A major scale is and how that helps us when we're playing in the key of A. We'll talk about notes that are easy to get to whenever we're soloing, um, and we'll talk, I'm gonna lead you through a series of exercises that will get your brain used to playing in the key of A and open up those improvisational channels. If you're watching here on the website, you got everything you need. I've got some jam tracks there for you to jam along with. Just watch the rest of the video lessons here. If you happen to be watching somewhere else, I'd love to have you on board as a Gold Pick member. Before we get to jamming, I do have one prerequisite for you, and that's for you to be familiar with the A major scale. Now, don't fret <laughs> if you don't know that scale, because I have an A major scale study for you where I cover not only the scale notes, but I have tons of other exercises. We teach you how to play them on single strings and how to do circular scale exercises. You don't actually don't need all of that, but you need, need to be familiar with the two major uh, two octave A major scale. Uh, let's just review that really quick, and then if you need more help, you can jump over to the scale study. It starts on the second fret of the lowest string, and then you're gonna play two, four, six. Then you'll go up to the next string, play it open, and then do two, four, six again. And then your open A string completes that first octave, that low octave. Then as we play our higher octave, we go open, two, four, five, then we'll go to the next string and do the same pattern. Open, two, four, five. And that top note there is also an A note. So if we're playing our two octave A major scale, we're gonna have three different A notes. We're gonna have this one up here. We'll have our A string. And then we have the note that we started on down here. Now, of course, we can play A major scale notes all over the mandolin neck, but today I just wanna concentrate on the ones that we can get to whenever our hand is down in the home position. We'll get to other things later on. But why do we want to know the A major scale? Well, starting off, whenever we're jamming, those are notes that we know are definitely legal in the key of A major. What do I mean by that? I mean, if you play these notes and you're playing along with 99% of the songs out there that are in the key of A, you can never go wrong. You just, I mean, there will be some notes that sound better than others, but none of these will get you arrested. And I just want to prove that to you. I'm going to have Daniel just play an A chord He's just going to play with some rhythm, and I'm just going to play through the lowest A major scale, and I want you to just listen for now, and just listen how none of the notes sound bad, even though he's not even changing chords. One, two, ready, go. I'll keep going. Try that. Why don't you try it with me? We'll do that two octave scale just straight up and down. One, two, ready, go. Now you may think, well, it sounds great because you're only playing an A major chord. What about other chords? Well, most of our songs that are going to be in the key of A are going to have the same three chords in some order. They'll have other chords thrown in there, of course. But the three chords that you can almost always count on are going to be the one, four, and five from the key of A. Well, the one chord is the A chord. But if you count up the major scale, A, B, C sharp, D, it's also going to have a D chord quite often. And then your next one, A, B, C sharp, D, E, is your five chord. And we're going, most of our songs in A are going to have an E chord as well. So I'm just going to ask Daniel to play like two measures of one, two measures of the four, two measures of the five, and I'm just going to play through the A major scale just like we did, and I just want you to listen to it first, and then the second time through, we'll just do it again. Second time through, y'all join us. Two, ready, go. Now the four chord. That sounds great. Now the five chord. I'll go with this. Here we go. Now, 
would you ever play an A major scale for a solo? Maybe not, but not exactly as we played it there, but you'll definitely play parts of it. The point of that is that if you notice, that all sounded pretty good. Like there was nothing there that made us go eek, right? Nothing there that made us go, oh, that, that, that note doesn't sound right. They all sounded pretty doggone good. So that's a good thing for us to um, keep in mind is that whenever we're playing in the key of A, if we can get these A major scale notes under our fingers and know where we're going, then we always have a place to go. Do we want to play that scale linearly? Like I said, not all the time. And that's where we're going to move next. Because what I want us to try to do now is to begin to randomize these notes. That just means we play the same notes in the A major scale, but we're going to not play them in a linear order. We're going to begin to choose which notes we want to play. And this is the beginning of the I word, improvisation, where you are the boss, you're the adult in the room, and you're going to choose which notes get played. Now, you do have to have a handle on the A major scale to be able to do this, but let's make it a little easier. Let's just use one octave at first. So, Daniel, if you could play, we'll just keep that one, four, five pattern going. And our legal notes for this exercise is going to be that bottom, that lowest A major scale. There are these notes. Okay, so those are our eight notes that we can play for the sake of this exercise. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find different ways to get to them. You don't have to play only eighth notes or only quarter notes. You can also play half notes or even longer. If you need to sit around and think about which note comes next, that's fine too. I'll do through one pro uh, progression and then we'll just trade back and forth. One, two, ready, go. Stab at it. That's awesome. Okay, how do you feel about that? If it was challenging, that's a good thing. And it probably was if all you've ever done is played stuff off a tap. If you've always just played what was written, you've never actually had to exercise a part of your brain that is authoritative and which notes are going to come next. So this takes practice and it takes, you know, it takes a process and that's what we're doing slowly, slowly, right? Um, as my... Uh, as one of my Indian friends says, he says, slowly, slowly. So let's, let's try it moving up um, to, or to the next octave. All right, so we're going to start here on the A string. And the notes that are legal, quote unquote legal for us this time, are the, um, these notes. We'll get into two octaves in a little while. Don't worry about that. Uh, but let's just try randomizing those notes. And if you find yourself getting into a pattern, like you find that every time you play this A note that you always just want to come down to that fourth fret. We'll just try to break that pattern the next time you do it. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. There are no wrong notes. Now you try it. Take another step. Try another one. Go.
how'd you do? Well, I want you to try that more and more. You know, if you are new to that and you're struggling, again, that's normal. I think you should spend hours doing that. So I've got the rhythm tracks down below and get more and more familiar with your A major scale and then get more and more familiar with randomizing these notes. Because again, if you've never done this, it's something that you have to learn how to do. And it doesn't come supernaturally for a lot of folks, for most folks, um, but it will get better as it goes, okay? So in the next video, um, I'm gonna call that playing with purpose because I'm going to begin to add some objectives that I want you to accomplish as you're jamming so it's not completely random anymore because when we get into improvisation, we're going to be wanting to accomplish things with our solos. So let's go there next.